a lot of the CQB you see on the internet seems to be mostly dynamic movements. Probably because it does look way cool. Have you ever seen cool music laid over a threshold evaluation? It's just not the same. If you don't have this all figured out and enjoy maintaining a curious mindset when it comes to learning tactics, make sure you are subscribed somewhere down below. Absent of technology like robots, cameras, or even gas, there are two ways CQB clearings are taught and that's dynamic or deliberate. But primarily the word dynamic identifies the speed at which you are conducting that clearing. Occasionally CQB needs to be done quickly in order to prevent the loss of life or minimizing further levels of destruction. Speed can be really important when the mission supports it, and in law enforcement, that's usually only when conducting a hostage rescue or responding to an active shooter, which is also basically hostage rescue. Therefore, the majority of the time as an officer, you will be conducting a deliberate clearing. During a dynamic clearing, you sacrifice exposure for speed, and in a deliberate clearing, you minimize your exposure to threat areas and avoid overcommitting to a room until we absolutely have to. Deliberate favors safety and dynamic favors speed when you have to assume more necessary risk. Whether we are moving dynamic or deliberate, the overall goal and CQB principles remain the same. The difference is the speed at which we are moving and how much time we are spending outside the threshold. If we're moving deliberate, it doesn't mean that we won't move fast at all because no matter what, when it's time to cross the threshold, you need to be moving quickly because at that point, the only thing that might save your life is the bad guy missing as you enter. Whether we are moving dynamically or deliberately, we usually want to take the first available opportunity to begin conducting a threshold evaluation, also sometimes referred to as slice in the pie. So for demonstration purposes of conducting a threshold evaluation, I'm only concerned with what is to the right of this threshold over here. The first available opportunity I have to start gathering information is from all the way back here. If I try to do that from the right side, I get all the way up to basically the only corner that we're concerned about that can hurt me. I significantly reduce my reactionary gap. If somebody is to come out here with a firearm or even a knife, there's a good chance that I'm going to have a significant physiological response and then I may backpedal, fall over and trip over all this stuff over here. So I'm actually giving myself less options by doing that. So if I was to conduct a threshold evaluation on that open area right there, I would begin doing that from right here. And from right here, I can see somewhat into that area and I can see a door. And so I'm just gonna speed this up and walk through it. But how I would do that threshold evaluation is my gun would be out and I would shuffle my feet, lean over just slightly, get more information. My feet follow my gun and my head, lean over just slightly, gather more information, feet follow gun. And I would do that all the way over to here. So once I'm here in this particular situation, I can see that there is a door that is slightly cracked and I still am really concerned with what is over in this direction. Again, remember the standard is somebody standing there somewhere with a gun ready to shoot you at the first available opportunity. So I wanna be very careful about breaking this angle right here. And I also wanna be very careful that I am not over committing myself to what I could reasonably cover. So as I'm working this angle here, because this door is cracked, I am concerned probably mostly with what's over in this direction because if that door opens, I'm going to have some time to get around to the door. So I would continue to conduct a threshold evaluation. And in this particular situation, I would actually cheat like I, you're gonna see me do with my gun more over in this direction. Now, if this door was open, now I'm really concerned with what's over there, but I'm also really concerned with what's over in this direction. So instead of over committing my gun to one direction, I would split the difference with my muzzle. That way, if something presents itself there, I have an equal opportunity to get over there and I have an equal opportunity to get over here. So again, because that door is cracked and there is an open space over here that I haven't seen yet, I wanna be really concerned with spending too much time over committing this direction. So I'm, I'm actually probably not going to break this 90 right here, but I'm gonna get pretty close. And I see there's another closed door, but I don't know, I still don't know what's over here in this direction. So at this point, only because that door is cracked, I would move quickly from here to over there. Again, what I'm concerned about is somebody holding a gun 
right here or somewhere in this area. And the only way to mitigate that at this point is to move quickly from here to there. So I would be here, lean over, and that's what I would do for that. If the door is open, I would do it the same because if the door is open, the more I continue to push out here and try and do this threshold evaluation, I'm over committing this direction and I cannot reasonably cover both these areas. Now, after we've done this threshold evaluation here, we've gained information and we've decided that we are going to work this door from the knob side. If you haven't seen the video I made on working doors, I'll have that linked at the end of this video. So we'll just say that this area over here is a nook, but there's actually no doors here, nothing to be concerned about. And so we are going to put ourselves on the knob side of this door. So we've done this threshold evaluation here. We've come into here. Open the door, let it breathe, wait for a reaction. If we don't get a reaction, That's really the basic idea with threshold evaluations. They're really not all that complicated. Remember that if you're moving dynamically or in a deliberate method, you are still doing a threshold evaluation. The only difference is the speed at which you are moving. If you found this information valuable and you wanna support the brand, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to be notified.